TrueStreamMedia.com here. Remember Total Information Awareness, the program that was led by John Poindexter, the old shadow warrior under the government administration of Reagan and on down through the years. You know, it was set up after 9-11, supposedly to catch terrorists by spying on all Americans completely. Well, supposedly there was some oversight after a while, and it allegedly got shut down. I think we know better than that. Here's their really creepy logo you may have seen that shows an all-seeing eye on top of a pyramid looking at the entire globe with its gaze, actually specifically focused on North America. I guess they would get to the rest of the globe as it spins. Kind of a metaphor for what's going on. Well, did their surveillance ever really end? Very doubtful since it's increasingly clear there's a total monitoring of all communications under America and definitely a Big Brother society going on. Lots of news this week about the National Security Agency as Obama just kind of casually endorses spying without warrants, without any real oversight anyway, because supposedly there's terrorists everywhere. Terrorists. Yeah, this came out actually in The Guardian, the, that it was an exclusive. They were sent a top-secret court order from April that the NSA was having Verizon Wireless hand over millions of their customers' um, phone calls, and that this was going on on an ongoing daily basis, and that they were required to do so. So that's pretty freaking creepy. And then the very next day, this came out in the Washington Post while the CEO and chairman of the Washington Post was hanging out at the Bilderberg meeting. This came out an exclusive for them. A, it slides from a top-secret NSA program called PRISM, which shows that they're gaining access to the servers of nine Internet companies, and they're basically collecting all that data. And if you go down one of the slides, actually straight up says, Microsoft, Google, Yahoo, Facebook, PalTalk, YouTube, Skype, AOL, Apple, and this is what they're getting. They're getting emails, video and voice chats, videos, photos, stored data, file transfers, you name it. And it even goes so far as to show the dates with which uh, this collection, PRISM collection, began for each provider. And so it started with Microsoft back in September of 2007, all the way on. And it's so bad now that even one of the writers, uh, co-authors of the Patriot Act, is saying that this is un-American. Right, and the revelations have come out previously that all the physical phone lines have been monitored for years, and now it's just a clear admission that, yes, as everyone expected, all the major platforms online are being completely surveilled, trolled for data, and on and on. And you see this article here in PopSci.com, Popular Science, about why government phone spying is really about big data and they get right into the US National Security Agency headed by General Keith Alexander a figure I've been paying attention to for the last few years due to his attendance at the Bilderberg meetings and he's curiously not on the list this year but someone who is is this company right here Palantir Technologies I'll get right into them but the Bilderberg agenda has a special, I think the most important revelation of the year about Bilderberg is their admission that they're meeting on this, how big data is changing almost everything. And they've got all these big tech firms there, Eric Schmidt from Google, uh, you've got just all kinds of people, Jeff Bezos from Amazon.com, and this guy attending for the first time, Alex Karp, founder and CEO of CI-funded Palantir Technologies. And this company is admittedly CIA-funded. They got $2 million at their startup from NQTEL, which is the basically funding and research arm of the CIA. And he founded this company alongside the PayPal founder, Peter Thiel, who's a big key figure at Bilderberg meetings. And he's been going every year for the past several years. He's on the steering committee. And so this company, Palantir, founded by Alex Karp, who's the director of it, as well as by <clears throat> Teal from Silicon Valley, is a big crossover between corporations and government spying. It says here, Geeks vs. Terrorist, Palantir Technologies, a little-known software company, started in Silicon Valley, has quietly become one of the most important companies in Washington. Why? Because maybe they figured out a way to stop the next, next terrorist attack. Well, if you believe that, you're just plain naive. But what they really are into 
is some of the biggest levels of data mining ever. And again, we're talking about Bilderberg meeting on the topic of how big data is changing everything. We wrote about that here in the Thousand Points of Light Bilderberg 2013 article and its infinite connections to the New World Order. But this PDF has a lot of creepy quotes about this Bilderberg attendee from Palantir Technologies and right here is an illustration of some of the way they analyze data. It's got keywords and connections everywhere, supposedly how elections relate to the birth rate, to the explosion in population, to different types of negative events here, assassinations, their connection with public appearance, the Taliban, the connections to financing, to hijacking, to drug dealing, to our Chamber of Commerce, to Bank of America. Julian Assange is on there, and we're going to get into the reason why as Alex Karp of Palantir Technologies is worthy of analyzing. And there is, I guess, their logo showing their role in looking over this stuff. We're going to move on down the page here. It's got stuck for a moment. But look how intricate these things are and how they're analyzing data in its context. They talk about that over here in this article about big data, how it's not the specific content of calls that they're looking at through the system, it's the context and how it relates to other data points that meet up on these kind of networking maps. And I think we're going to move forward here. Killer app, they say. Have a bunch of Silicon Valley geeks figured out how to stop terrorists? Why, of course not, silly reporter. They've just handed it over to the Big Brother terrorists that run everything. At any rate, they get into all these stories about Mexican drug dealers and how they were tracked through the DEA and how that data was dealt with, the role of Palantir Technologies in doing that. And they get on down to some of the key points for the company's rise to power and why it's considered one of the most important Washington firms. And uh, they highlight a case here for Mexican drug cartels. But that's just part of selling you on why these people can help solve the problem when they're actually facilitating a larger problem of a completely out of control rogue government. And they mention this figure right here, John Poindexter. And there's his face. And again, he was the founder of Total Information Awareness with that creepy all-seeing eye technology. He was a key figure during the 80s with the war on drugs, a lot of operations in Latin America. And it talks about how John Poindexter was an early advisor on Palantir. He really uh, told him what he thought of their system, how they could use the data. And they get into the startup funding for different people. And one of them, as I've already mentioned, is Peter Thiel right here on the left. And he is, of course, the PayPal founder, one of the early backers of Facebook who really launched it into a bigger system. And now, as a steering committee member on Bilderberg, he's one of the main setters of the agenda and someone who chooses the attendees. And without a doubt, as a co-founder of Palantir, he was involved in inviting Alex Karp to speak with high-level government officials, bankers, industrialists, on why big data is so important. There's George Tennant, the former CIA director, who also advised him on the, the Palantir Technologies. They acknowledge how he's a client of that. Other figures, John Bro, lobbied his colleagues on Palantir's behalf. Of course, the big lobbyists are going to line up for that stuff. And further and further into this really creepy article on this influential but little known firm. They get into Alex Karp's PhD, and right here is mention of NQTEL's investment in the company, about $2 million. And when that's starting up and when it's just data, that's a pretty big investment. And of course, the payoff for the investment is they get to advise the NSA, the CIA, the other intelligence networks. And there's another former counterterrorism official, his role with Palantir. There's a figure from NQTEL and some of these other representatives who back the corporation. But down in here, you'll get to see some of the stuff that they really are using Palantir for. And they talk about this naive concept they have that Palantir has safeguarded civil liberties when actually they're handing over massive amounts of data to the NSA, who are admittedly once again spying on all Americans without warrants and without any kind of proper checks and balances. Some of the stuff, uh, I don't know if I'll get a chance to get into in detail in this article, 
Carp talks about how his employees are not on a long leash. They're given the status to do basically whatever they want, carte blanche and the company. And that was the director of Palantir. The office was like a fraternity for very smart people, said Tim Su, who worked for two years as a software engineer. They got in at the tactical level, said a former intelligence military officer. And on and on, all these creepy connections, not only to intelligence, but to Pentagon applications of it. And right here, the article delves a little bit into WikiLeaks, the secret group that they would really like to stop from leaking data. And the Justice Department discusses their strategy of hoping to hold WikiLeaks accountable by showing that WikiLeaks is hurting, hosting data in certain countries that will aid in prosecution. But then more, they get into how uh, these figures say the system that Palantir helped build and develop should target WikiLeaks' global following and volunteer staff as well as people donating money to the group. They also need to get people to understand that if they support the organization, they will go after them, and they're going to use transaction records, among other data. And that's the kind of stuff they're going to use big data for, to target dissident groups like WikiLeaks. Love them or hate them, the role they're in is destabilizing to government's operation. They specifically discuss targeting Glenn Greenwald, who's perhaps the leading drone critic, who's exposed a lot of their operations, including the Double Tap, and they say people like Glenn Greenwald, the prog progressive blogger who's a vocal WikiLeaks supporter, he should be targeted with cyber attacks on his server. Uh, well, he should be targeted anyway, and cyber attacks should be used against WikiLeaks. That's another thing that's on the Bilderberg agenda. And again, the NSA director, Keith Alexander, has typically attended Bilderberg in the past few years. It's curious he wasn't there in the same year they're discussing big data, but it doesn't make much difference when you've already got these established connections. And right here they get into how Palantir was founded on the idea of protecting personal freedoms and, and this whole ruse that they protect our privacy despite their data collections. But then they say, <clears throat> well, I guess it's further down the article here, what they get into is how they may have protections, but software governments and the, <clears throat> and the government, specifically the National Security Agency, would be able to break through their supposed protections and use it for illicit purposes. It would be very hard to circumvent them, Carp, the founder of Palantir, said. It would take a world-class software team, a world-class software team just like the NSA, who they get into and their exploitation of Palantir and how they've been clients of Palantir and how they took over right here. The NSA took over many of John Poindexter's total information awareness programs after they were officially shut down, but it rejected one building privacy, privacy enhancing technology into computer software. Then they discuss General Keith Alexander, who has testified in Congress about the role of Palantir software in cybersecurity and national security agency operations. They, of course, have that brand new data processing center out in the Utah desert probably one of the most expensive government buildings of all times, and how the cultural distinctions between Palo Alto and the Tyson Center have become more pronounced, blah, 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 but it's a kind of techno-military hybrid. And they go on and on, but there's obviously a very creepy, very unsafe relationship between the NSA and this Palantir company started by the big Silicon Valley technical technocrat expert, directing Bilderberg Affairs and merging it with the big power banking structures that have already controlled the world and are looking to use technology for greater control. It's not that we give people a long leash at Palantir. There are no leashes at Palantir. That's a quote from Dr. Alexander Karp, again, attending Bilderberg this year. Signing off for TrueStreamMedia.com.